What's going on guys? Jeremy with Care Services and Balamo Tutorials. Alright, I'm getting a little long winded here guys. We're getting into intro to programming logic. We're going back over a couple things. Uh, one person's having trouble with pseudocode. One person's having trouble with flow charting. So we're going to do both. I've already done this tutorial once and I done, it took me like 25 minutes just to do one part. So I've really got to cut everything short a little bit here and just go over how I would read the program, how I would start to pseudocode, and then show you what I would do in my pseudocode. So the first thing when you start a program is read what it is they want you to do. This is a, this one is pretty simple. It's how much insurance. Alright. So it's asking you how many the financial experts advise that property owners should insure their home or business buildings for at least 80% of the amount it would cost to replace the structure. So right here is telling you that you've got one variable right here that's going to be 80% as a constant, and then you've got another one which is going to be set up as cost. And that cost would be the total amount that it would take to replace your home or building. So if there's a fire or any kind of damage like that. Uh, and the next one is going to be designing a modular program that asks the user to enter the replacement cost. So enter cost into the building then display the minimum amount of the insurance he or she would pay for the, or buy for the property. So I'm going to bring in the code and we'll get started. Alright. Here is the code that I came up with. Usually you would use pencil or paper. You'd maybe mark every time I read this I would have put in how many, you know, 80%. Okay, I know I'm going to have to set up a variable for that. It's a constant because they're giving you the number. So I'm going to declare that one as a constant real and I'm going to set that rate equal to the 80% into a decimal format. Uh, next is telling you how, you know, how much the 80% of the cost to replace the structure. So I'm going to go ahead and, de and declare cost as my next variable. So you can set this up one of two ways. Go ahead and say I'm going to go ahead and give a display and an input right here. I'm going to display how much would it cost to rebuild your home or business. Maybe we should get a little bit more descriptive in case of fire or you know, whatever it is you want to do in case of damage. You would want to be as descriptive as you can so that people understand what's going on. Once we display, we output onto the screen the question we're asking, then we're going to need to input what it is we're getting from them. So we are asking them the, how much it would cost to rebuild their home or business or building. So we can do either or. We're inputting that number into a variable named cost, which we declared right here. Next, we need to go ahead and make a module. We, I've, I've called it here in the first time I actually built the module out. I usually just build my module and I'll put call module min insurance and then I'll put the I'll tab in and then I build the module there. But just so you can see what I'm doing here, let me go ahead and just cut this out. Alright, here we're going to call the module. We're calling the module min insurance, okay, we're not returning anything and then we're going to build our module. So our module that I've named here is going to be a void. We're not returning any kind of data back. We're just doing what it told us to and then we're we're done. So we call the module min insurance. The module real uh, mid insurance minimum insurance is going to pull in the constants here of real rate and it's going to pull in the variable cost. That way it's bringing in both numbers into our function so that we can use them. That's what passing in means. We are, like football, we would be passing the ball to, to the running back so that he could run the ball down the field. If we weren't passing in the ball or we weren't passing the ball to a receiver to get, score a touchdown, you're not going to do anything. So if we're playing with a pretend ball and we're just throwing, you know, throwing pretend balls, we'd be standing there all day. So we pass in the value of rate, which is equal to 80% right here, and we pass in the cost, which we got from the user right here. 
So we pass those in, then we declare our new variable, min insurance, equal to rate times cost. And I know somebody is going to be watching this and say, well, your function's name min insurance. Why are you declaring a variable? It doesn't matter. I could call this purple cow. It, it, it really does not matter what you name your variables inside of this. All you're doing, all, all you're doing is returning whatever you're doing back. So the main program never sees this. It just sees that whatever you're returning here. So we do that. We do our, uh, most people will set this, but since it's a variable, we're gonna go ahead and set the variable equal to what it is, which is rate times cost. Next, we're gonna display your minimum insurance to cover your cost would be dollar min insurance. And I put the dollar here, and there's no space between the dollar and the closing uh, quotation marks because once the actual uh, variable is calculated here, it's gonna be stored into this variable here, and then it'd be butted up right against the dollar sign. So it'd be like passing in 600. So it'd look like that. If I spaced it, it'd look like that. So just something to keep in mind. You'll see that I did that up here as well. I have my colon here waiting for the user to input something and then I have a space. That way it just gives a little bit of break between the question I'm asking and what they're typing in. And then I return the value back to the main program which then is this right here. It, it's called module min insurance. And then at the very end we end the program. Now what I did on the last one is I came through and uh, I kind of built the beginning of the flowcharts to show you I have my main I have my end I have my two dis I have a decision because I need to declare my variables I have a display I have an input and then right over here I have a function so as you can see it took two seconds to build my flowchart now in the next tutorial we're going to take all this information we're going to put it into the flowchart that we've built and set up the rest of it. So what I've done is I've cut my time in half here. I know I sped through this, but I, knowing that you can kind of see what I did, why I did what I did, hopefully it'll help you better understand what pseudocode is or what it's asking for. As you as the programmer, you build your pseudocode so that you can have an idea of what you're going to be doing. You're basically building your program, you're building your flowcharts, all in, in common language. That way you can read it, you can understand what you're doing, and as you can see, once you start doing it, you'll start putting all these words in here. Like here, I'm going to have my main function, I'll name it something like insurance. In my process, I'm going to have a declare, and I'm going to put all this right here. And here, I'm going to have display, and I'm going to put all that in here. I'm going to have my input, I'm going to put my input here, and so on and so forth. I'm going to call my function. Over here I'm going to build my function and return it back to this called function. And then here I'm going to end my program. So I mean, pseudocode isn't necessary. It's not detrimental that you do it, but you know what? It's going to save you so much time and you can desk check your pseudocode build your flowchart, desk check your, your flowcharts, and then you can see if you're going to get the numbers that you're needing. So I mean, why not do it? Instead of beating your head against the wall, <coughs> Nikki, you know, do your pseudocode, get familiar with your flowcharting, and you know, really work it out to where it becomes second nature. You just automatically go to your pseudocode breaking it down into common language that you understand, setting up your variable, pulling out your variables that you're going to be using, taking those variables here, like here where we've done this, okay? This is what I mean by taking them out. I've got my rate and I've got a cost. Okay, well, what am I going to do with this cost and how am I going to use this rate? Well, it tells you here, somehow you've got to display something to get a number to store into your cost. So I know I'm going to have a display and an input. Here I've got a rate that's equal to 80% of my cost. So I'm te it's telling me here that I'm going to have a calculation right here that where I put it 
that I've got to get 80% of that cost to store the minimum amount of insurance that I need. So you're just you're you're picking this thing apart and slowly building up until you've got the actual program. Remember guys, computers are stupid. You've got to tell them each thing to do. Same thing with a user. A user is dumb. They have no idea what you want them to do, so you've got to tell them what you want to do. How much would it cost to rebuild your home? Please tell me. They tell me. I say, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to calculate this by the rate of 80% of your total cost to rebuild, and I'm going to tell them, hey, this is the minimum insurance you need to cover how much it would cost to, be, you know, to rebuild your house. So your minimum insurance to cover your cost would be this. So uh, that's about my 15 minutes there, guys. So I tried to cut this down a little slow, uh, quicker. So if you have any questions, if I went too fast, you know what to do. Comment, rate, subscribe. Check us out at facebook.com slash careservicesnc or careservices.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check you in the next tutorial, guys. Have a good day.